Hello painters, how are you? This time I am going to start a new series, I think. It's called Back to Basics and I am going to use simple subjects to show some basic concepts. This is the palette that I'm using. I'm going to list all the paints on the screen. So, let's begin! I'm using flat brushes this thin super fun brush and of course some medium to make the paint thinner and make it dry faster and some thinner i am using these acrylics to make the sketch just a pinch because the drawing is super simple in this one we are doing back to the basics I am probably doing more of this series because I want to make some easier paintings to explain basic stuff again. I am working flat right now because this is a super super small piece and I don't know. I was a bit lazy to set up the easel. Sometimes it's fun to paint flat on the table. Okay, now I can get rid of this acrylic and start making my main mixes, for example, the whites. The whites can be both blue, maybe a bit violet too. I am noticing a bit of green. I will show you where exactly. Um, why not? A bit yellow ochre too. Okay, the key here is to keep the value as in the original picture. For example, I can notice some pinkish tones here, some yellowish tones here, because here is where the light is, being, is hitting, and some greens here. So, instead of being accurate with the photo, I am going to exaggerate those tones. And I will forget about the sprinkles. I'm going to do everything roughly and fast. If we are using the maximum value for these whites, we won't be able to add the highlights because we already used the, the maximum value. So I am going to use a bit darker than these tones, for example, adding some quick grey with burnt umber and ultramarine. I am going to do a quick grey to darken this blue fast. pink a bit of medium just a pinch because if we add too much medium it's going to be transparent and the blue is going to see through the paint and we don't want that this part is the one that must be lighter and this one from here and now we are going to do the shadow parts and these are going to be cooler for example some nice violet let me grab a quick gray again with umber and ultramarine they complement each other so they create a nice neutral tone and if we add that to the mix everything will tone down so here we have a nice purple a bit darker and we are going to use it for the shadow parts A bit of orange here in these parts because I want to make the illusion that the sugar is being a bit transparent in the, in these parts. I am going to use the same bit of ochre with napton red, bit of white, and I think this is a nice donut. Maybe it's okay. Bit 
of Hamsa yellow with white for the light part here and for this part here that is in shadow I am going to add a bit of magenta a bit of umber works pretty nice here but I want to desaturate them so how can I make less intense a pink tone with the complementary that is blue green something like that and because this is a bit darker just white and fixed okay and this way we have a nice transition here imagine you want to see if your values are correct even though you are changing the colors so you can use your real life filter you switch to filters to mono or black and white you have to check if the values on your camera are being the same in your painting and in your picture if that's the case for example the gradient here it's the same you can keep with the painting for example inside the hole i'm not having the correct value i need to paint it darker i'm going to add darker colors to the hole more burnt on there dark but we can mix here to have a nice intermediate color and add some random shadows to the sugar part and with white and this almost green blue with a bit of medium the medium is going to make the painting slippery i'm going to be able to apply this on top do you see this we are going to do the same on the sprinkles you'll see okay i'm going to add first the shadows and then the sprinkles so for example this violet from here is going to be perfect and we have to use a bit of medium to make it slippery and with the edge of the brush we are going to add plops brush because it's going to be easy I'm going to prep the mixes for the sprinkles for example a bit of white with this cobalt teal for the blue ones okay next yellow with a bit of naptol maybe this is too intense bit of white more yellow again and because I don't want it to be so intense I'm going to add just a pinch of blue to make it less chromatic now some mint greens for that I'm going to reuse this because why not some green some lemon and white and it don't have to be, it don't has a bit of red, maybe we, do, we can reuse this, more red, maybe a bit of brown. And 
and some whites, of course. So for those, we need to add the whites and the shadow of the whites, which will probably be some of this. So again, lots of mediums. I'm going to start with the blues. You can have the knife here. Um, background and I think I am going to respect the original image reference and I am going to paint the back so let me mix with all of this here let me mix a pretty brown with ochre some naphtal red and burnt wood I'm going to use again this big brush so starting with the part the back part this is super great I'm going to make this pink more vibrant because it's super close to us and I like to force this perspective and the shadow is going to be more intense bit of magenta with the ox purple and a bit of umber we need to make this And this has to be gradient. Let's intense in the back with this blue lighter. So we have a nice gradient here with less intense paint on the back and more intensity, more chromatic painting in the front. And what color should will it be? I think the teal is pretty nice. So I'm going to switch the brush, clean it a bit, and I am going to use this green that I have here. And I haven't used it in the sprinkle part. I'm going to use it on the background. I think it's going to fit pretty nice. I like to make also a little gradient on the background from light to dark this is just the preference and another preference that I have is to add some fun drawing marks on the painting for example with this purple here I am going to Add some exaggerated and fun. lines. And because we are working on a la prima, we can do this and the, the paint will be mixed and the effect is going to be quite nice in my opinion okay I think this is done I will I won't touch it again click my signature and it's done so what do you think I think this is a pretty nice example to review all the basics why we should use less chromatic colors when we are not in the light parts why we should use super saturated colors when we are 
on the light parts. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you like this quick, fast and easy painting because I may do some more like this in the future to review another simple painting concept like this one. See you in the next video. Bye!